So we're on this trail of lightweight Linux distributions. There's a few reasons for this. First of all, older computers have so many great uses to them. Not only should we try and limit the amount of e-waste that we have going into landfills everywhere, but education, developing nations, people that just want to repurpose old hardware for new uses. There is so much good stuff out there for old hardware, and yet there's no software seemingly to run on it. So that's where the wonderful flexibility of Linux comes in. Now, I've already had a look at Peppermint OS in the first video of this series. Today, I'm going to be having a look at what I would consider to be the heavyweight of the lightweight options, and, uh, and that is Zorin OS Lite 16.1. It's an Ubuntu-based desktop, which automatically kind of discounts it from a lot of older hardware because it's 64-bit only. However, what I like about this particular option is that if you have an old-ish piece of hardware that you want to install a fully featured OS on it. You have two options in my mind. Zorin OS 16.1 Lite is one of them and Linux Mint XFCE is another one. We're having a look at XFCE Linux Mint shortly on the channel, but for today let's jump into Zorin OS 16.1 Lite and see what trade-offs do you miss off a full-featured desktop like Zorin OS. All of you who are using Arch by the way and are running LXQT or an i3 window manager situation, feel free to sound off in the comment section below. I'm sure I'll catch up with you guys soon. So a bit of backstory with this one, and you'll have to forgive my croaky voice. For some reason, I managed to contract a voice issue between recording the intro and recording the screen. So bear with me. But the backstory with this one is that I actually meant to look at the the, the light version of Zorin OS 16 when it came out. Uh, and that was towards the end of the year. And I think I mentioned it in one of my uh, Distro Digest videos from the end of last year. But things got busy, just couldn't get around to it. So first up, we do need to cover system resources and talk about how much is used because honestly, out of all of the lightweight distros that I'm looking into in this series, this one is the heavyweight. And what I mean by that is that while the desktop Zorin OS 16.1 Lite can run really well on older hardware and it's designed to, I would say the number one thing is that the install footprint, the pre-installed apps, and also the memory usage uh, does rival a lot of full-blown uh, desktops. Now, the difference is, is that because of the fact the desktop itself isn't animation heavy, as it relies on a sort of custom concoction of, XF, of mostly XFCE, the desktop still feels really sprightly uh, on this older uh, device. Now, this is, like I've mentioned before, it's a 2011 uh, Dell XPS uh, from the Sandy Bridge Intel era. Uh, you can kind of get a quick uh, glance at what we're working with here. Now, granted, this is not running in a virtual machine. This is very much running on uh, on bare metal. And you can see off a cold boot, it runs on about double the amount of RAM that Peppermint OS was. Now, granted, I also have given it double the amount of RAM. So maybe that bears out, but it is worth mentioning that Zorin OS Lite is only available at least in the 16.1 version as a 64-bit system. Uh, that means if you are stuck on a 32-bit uh, architecture, you are left out in the cold a little bit here. However, like Zorin do have their older LTS 15.3 version that they do have available in a 32-bit uh, version, but you miss out on a lot of the on a lot of the fun goodies that Zorin OS 16.1 has, understandably. Uh, so when it comes to the overall, uh, I guess persistent performance of something like Zorin OS Lite at cold boot here without anything else being launched. Oh no, I take it back. I do have a keyboard launcher here. So that's in addition to what normally is running. But apart from that, 82 tasks, uh, about 600 meg of RAM. It's pretty good for a heavier lightweight desktop. And I'm probably going to return to that theme a few times because many of you have pointed out in the comments that there are lighter weight desktops and distros out there that are absolutely lean, mean fighting machines. And I will be looking at those and keep those suggestions coming. Uh, so far, we've added Antics and some others to the list. So this series could well carry me to the end of the year, honestly. But I did want to have a look at Zorin OS because I think the light version of Zorin OS makes the minimal amount of trade-offs that you would need to have in in order to run a fully featured OS on older hardware. What I love about that is that you don't get penalized in terms of uh, aesthetics. Uh, a lot of these lighter weight desktops do make trade-offs when it comes to how good the OS looks. 
And you still get a lot of the same custom Zorin tweaks that the desktop has become, the full version of the desktop has become quite famous for. Uh, you get the same very nice theming. And obviously it is it can be very bright. Like if you're used to being in a dark space, some of these bright themes can be pretty full on. Um, but the dark theme is quite nice and the accent colors is quite nice. And the fact that these remain consistent and give a really, really coherent user experience between the two means that honestly you could run the, the, the main version of Zorin OS on recent hardware, run Zorin OS Lite on your old stuff and really honestly not feel too much of a difference. The only tweak I've made here to the user interface is up sizing the font just a smidge. This is a 1080p display on a 15, 15.6 uh, 15 inch monitor. Maybe I'm just getting old, but I do prefer slightly larger text and maybe you do too watching the video. Uh, so like I said before, it is running a optimized and customized version of XFCE. So that means you are getting the Thuna file manager, you're getting XFCE 4.16. There are some extras here in terms of like this menu, for example, is uh, is I believe it's unique to Zorin OS. And the way that the panel at the bottom here is modeled after what most people would expect from a Windows 10 desktop or something similar is really nice. Uh, now it is worth pointing out obviously that one of the things that Zorin has done for a long time is give you different desktop layouts. In the core version of Zorin OS Lite, you get the sort of Windows 10 look or a more traditional, uh, you know, Windows XP era look as well. Uh, and then obviously with the uh, with the Pro version, you get all those other ones as well. So for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna stick with the Windows 10 layout. Because uh, again, I think it emulates uh, without trading off any visual panache, the full version of Zorin OS and modern desktops in general. Special shout out to the immaculate spacing of these system tray icons. I know it's a tiny thing, but man, it bugs me when you have um, misaligned system tray icons. Okay, so when it comes to pre-installed software on the core version, you get more than enough software for most users. And I think it is worth mentioning that um, because of the fact they go for feature parity between the core version and the main line version of Zorin, which is based off GNOME and the uh, light version, it does mean that the app selection, it remains the same. Now, again, I'm looking at the app selection of the pro version, which has quite a few more pre-installed apps. Um, but in the core versions of both Zorin OS mainline and light, the app selection remains very, very similar. Now, what that means is that none of these apps are really tailored necessarily for a lightweight experience. So you need to keep that in mind. But overall desktop responsiveness, I cannot say this enough, feels fantastic. Like I know this is meant to be one of the heavier lightweight distros, but the amount of polish and performance that you get out of a Zorin OS desktop is uh, out of the light version is actually really impressive. Now the issue here comes from the fact that we are running an older version of uh, the kernel. We're running a an LTS uh, release and all of our software management is done through the very bulky and, uh, and resource heavy software center uh, based off GNOME. Now this is the older version before it got prettied up in GNOME 41, 42. Uh, and so while this thing does have a great selection of software available out of the box, you get FlatHub enabled, you get Snap enabled, and you have the repositories and also some custom devs in the Zorin repositories, uh, you are stuck with the exact same tool for managing software and updates as you are on mainline Ubuntu. Now I know for a fact that opening this piece of, uh, this piece of bloat up on an old CPU and especially if you're running off a spinning hard drive, this thing can take forever to launch, which means that you're relegated back to um, getting comfortable with uh, uninstalling and installing stuff from the terminal, which if you're familiar with apt, good for you. But a lot of these other package formats, flat pack can be a real pain in the terminal because you've got to use a lot of punctuation for references and all that kind of thing. But it would be good to see in future releases of this project and uh, perhaps other lightweight versions. I'm thinking also of Linux Mint XFCE coming up later in the series uh, to have custom software management tools that are intentionally lighter weight. I know I think Zubuntu or Lubuntu were working on a lighter weight software center. I don't know if that actually became a thing. Somebody let me know in the comments. It also is worth mentioning that if you want a graphical tool to manage your uh, your dev packages or your repositories, Synaptic Package Manager isn't installed by default, so you need to go get that if you want that. Uh, but 
everything else out of the box just works. So Nvidia drivers are there if you need it. Most hardware is supported and the fact that software and, uh, and updates will be supported by Ubuntu and thus Zorin OS until I think 2025, uh, it's it's still got plenty of legs left on it. And uh, and the fact that Zorin don't update their OSs uh, in terms of a new brand new release uh, every year means that this desktop does actually get time to sit and stew and uh, and refine over time. So we're up to a point one release and obviously the, the version 15 got uh, three point releases over time. But I can't say enough and I can't stress enough how much polish gets put into uh, the light version just as much as the core version. On older CPUs, 32-bit CPUs, and on spinning hard drives, I wouldn't recommend this desktop. But if you have a relatively modern CPU, I'm thinking anything sort of post-2014, 2015, but it's a low-spec CPU, so say a Celeron or a Pentium or an Athlon, and you have a, a either an eMMC, uh, solid state drive or obviously a more um, preferable NVMe solid state drive on some of those cheaper laptops, this thing will fly compared to uh, running uh, Windows 10 on it or anything like that. Well, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Apologies once again for my voice. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.